now um, we we have a, a, a guest waiting in the green room. So let's bring in Anya Parampil to get her take on what we what we saw take place uh, last weekend. Anya, you've been saying that we are in World War Three, and this was sort of a a, a, like a historic chapter in the war that is currently that we're currently facing it's a political war first and foremost but explain what you mean and what your thoughts are on what we just witnessed there's always talk especially around israel now since october 7th of fears that world war three will begin i'm going to argue that we've been fighting world war three for several years we we are in a global war and it, it global war is defined when it results in an actual change in the power balance, the pre-existing world order. And that is now what we've entered. Th that stage in the war is what we have entered, probably even as a result of Putin's uh, action in Ukraine beginning in, in uh, 2022. Because if you look at the picture of, of the war, that we now see in in Gaza and then the other front in Ukraine, the allies, the coordination, the strategy is it's coordinated and the allies are the same. So Iranian drones, Iran has set, sold the drones that it used in this strike on Israel to Russia throughout the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And Russia has employed this straight, same strategy of overwhelming Ukrainian air defense with drones in order uh, to act as a precursor to a larger strike. And now Iran, after testing these drones through that alliance, is escalating or responding really to years and years of provocations from Israel, but especially this red line, the strike on sovereign Iranian territory in uh, on the consular building in Syria, uh, in order to, to demonstrate that the resistance axis, what the, what is often described as the resistance axis in the region, resisting U.S. hegemony in Israel in, in the region, uh, now has this capacity to fight back. And of course, if the U.S. were to get involved further, I think many people recognize that then you are talking about powers such as Russia stepping in as well. And I think because of previous world wars, we have this idea that it's not until the great powers themselves are fighting that were in the world war. But in reality, since the end of the last world war, the United States and its allies have uh, worked to establish a global order, a financial order and military order uh, that over the last 10 years or so we can see is beginning to fall apart. Syria was of course, a battlefield in which we saw the U.S. and its allies could not achieve their objective of regime change because Syria's alliance with Russia and other powers were too strong, was too strong. And, and now I think it's up to us in the West to step back and try to figure out, especially as Americans, where we fit in this new world. Is it worth fighting for anymore? Is it possible now to instead talk about someone coming in to prevent World War III begin discussing what a U.S. leader who could come in and look like to actually negotiate an end to it, negotiate peace in Europe, negotiate peace in the Middle East and say, we're done trying to bully, push the rest of the world through military force to participate in this dollar-based financial system that is already about to fall apart because of another prong in this war, which is the economic and financial war that Russia, China, and its allies have been preparing for and put in place also over a several year strategy. And so we need to be level headed here and recognize that, uh, yes, this could get worse before it gets better. But from the American side of things, I think if we miraculously got our got our country together and just operated like a normal country in this new world, we could actually have a reasonable place in it. Well, the Biden administration has declared its support for Israel to be ironclad, but that's obviously not the case. And Israel did not notify the Biden administration at any level of its planned attack, at least as far as we know, of its planned attack on 
Iranian sovereign territory in Damascus. That's in contrast to Iran stating that it notified the U.S. in advance of its attack. As Aaron mentioned, there was a lot of time to process the coming attack. Uh, Iran warned of a calibrated response. Israel was able to prepare its air defenses for that attack. Um, I think if Iran had wanted to surprise Israel another October 7th, the damage would have been much greater. Iran didn't seek lots of civilian casualties. It wasn't targeting Tel Aviv with hypersonic missiles. I'm not even sure if any hypersonic missiles were fired. So the U.S., I mean, if you look at the U.S.'s ironclad ally, I mean, it's a psychotic state that is seeking, and Biden himself has leaked this, or the Biden people leaked this, right, Aaron, to NBC News, that they saw Netanyahu as trying to drag them into a wider war. So now you actually have Israel getting attacked in an unprecedented fashion, and without the U.S., obviously, they can't survive. And the U.S. is telling them, you shall not respond. So you even have the Biden administration doing, attempting some kind of stop-gap measure to prevent this from escalating into a regional war. <clears throat> I don't know what's... I mean, I, I have a sense of where things could go next, and we can talk about the Israeli war cabinet and their deliberations... Uh, but I, I think this is unprecedented in seeing Israel be deterred in this way and even alienate its, uh, you know, its, its U.S. patron. Um, and here's what the U.S. you know taxpayer had to sh dole out for Israel's deranged actions: a billion dollars, one billion dollars, two hundred million dollars an hour during Iran's counterattack to defend the skies of apartheid Israel. I mean, those Iron Dome missiles are very expensive. David happy Sin. tax day, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So happy tax day. Uh, get ready to um, pay Zelensky for his Miami condo and uh, Yair Netanyahu for his condo next door. You know, I, I hope you're right about uh, a wedge between biden and israel but the problem is you know as you said israel's a lunatic state uh and biden is so feckless that let's say israel does launch some new escalatory attack on iran would biden actually do anything to deter it and yeah they claim they didn't have advanced knowledge of the strike on damascus i think that's possible because israel is so crazy that it makes sense to me that they and they have such contempt for for biden um and they see and they see him as someone that can be ignored that I wouldn't be surprised if they launched that attack on on the Iranian uh, consulate without U.S. support. But I could just as easily see them doing it with U.S. support because so many Israeli strikes on Syria are joint U.S.-Israeli strikes. One aspect of that strike on, on that point that was really interesting to me when it happened was that my question was not only did the United States know that it took place, but who was actually calling the shots in Israel in that moment? Because if people recall, that strike happened on a Monday. Sunday night or Sunday afternoon, we were told that Netanyahu was hospitalized for a hernia surgery. I don't know where that came from or why uh, he had a hernia, how that happened. But it, it was this odd period where Netanyahu was apparently recovering from a, a an operation. And then suddenly this huge consequential strike is carried out in Damascus by the by the Israeli military. To me, that that was just very odd timing, especially because at least the way that I look at the Israeli state and, and the U.S. state at this point is that there are many moving factions, many different interests at play. And Netanyahu is in a fragile position in his own within his own state. And so did the U.S. know who, if in the U.S., was told new because I feel again that there are moving parts and that we can't even speak of the U.S. government and the Israeli government as one or two separate but individual forces. Yeah. Um, Netanyahu is said to oppose immediate retaliation. Uh, interestingly, in his war cabinet, you have Gabi Ashkenazi, who's sort of to his left, emerges more from labor former Israeli chief of staff who favored an immediate retaliation 
Naftali Bennett to Netanyahu's right, who's not in the war cabinet, has called for an immediate retaliation. Benny Gantz, who's sort of supposed to be a centrist, but, you know, is no less fascist, has uh, opposes retaliation. The Passover holiday is coming up. And the Passover holiday is the beginning of crazy time in Israel. Uh, it's the beginning of this spring season of mass indoctrination uh, in which first Israelis learn that, uh, you know, th th they observe the Passover holiday in a very exclusivist and you could even say genocidal way, uh, which is in contrast to the way that, you know, I observe it with my family or my community. Uh, where they learn that in each generation, or they're told in each generation, enemies have risen up to destroy us. And that's the Egyptians. Then, uh, oh, they already had Purim where, you know, the evil Persians try to destroy them. Then there's Memorial Day where they observe all the soldiers who've been killed. They have Yom HaShoah observing the Holocaust where Israelis have to stop in the street with the sounding of a siren to commemorate the 6 million killed in the Holocaust. And, you know, you have to stop in the middle of the highway if that horn goes off. Everyone must stop and get out of their cars. And then you have Independence Day when Israel supposedly won its independence through ethnic cleansing from Palestine. All this happens in a very compressed period. It contributes to the indoctrination of Jewish Israelis into a siege Masada mentality. And this is all happening now. So, it doesn't make sense for Israel to invite a much stronger Iranian response during this period. Um, and it's so it's unclear to me what could happen next, but this, this looks like Netanyahu's card just got pulled. He looks really weak. Um, he is unable to drag the U S in at this point. Maybe it could happen at a later date. But this just seems to be like a major political defeat, not just for Netanyahu, but for Israel. And we'll talk about this later as it's most of its troops have been pulled out of Gaza and people in Gaza are starting to return to the rubble of their homes. Um, I, I don't know how they're going to say, oh, we, you know, and, and, and yet Biden is saying, telling Israel to accept its win. And the win is that, you know, nobody was killed. The air defenses generally worked. But that's this is not as the days go on through this holiday season in Israel, it's not going to look like a win. It's going to look like humiliation.